Good morning guys, I am back, and he's back with another fantasy adventure. Um, this is going to be my first time of the year, uh, you know, paddling on Whitewater River, the White Mouth River in southeast of Manitoba. Well, honestly, I don't have too much experience in paddling whitewaters, but this river is a great whitewater river. For beginners like me so I'm gonna spend three four days on this adventure pretty windy out here well it's always great to have like, moving waters you know and the tailwind just pushing me towards the downstream that is great that is great launched my canoe like 10 minutes ago um, my beautiful wife just dropped me off at the putting point uh, in Sandy Lands Provincial Park uh, at, that's actually a provincial forest not a provincial park um, yeah so another serious adventure just starts right now two nights three days Over 10 class 1, class 2 rapids, um, at least the 4 to 5 class 3 rapids. I'm gonna try my best to, you know, to paddle through with them and, and see what happens. But not today, maybe tomorrow. It is now. this water you know it's super warm but awesome it's been so hot lately the temperature has been over 30 Celsius degrees you know, for the past one week that's why the water is super warm and shallow is slow like this you gotta be very cautious about submerge the rocks and those rocks are, those rocks are troublemakers and you're very likely to get pinged or get new damaged you know that's that's not what you want to see just be careful Gotta make some distance before the temperature goes up, you know. Um, it's right now 10 a.m. 
so I'm gonna have to make at least 40 kilometers per day and yeah that's a that's a pretty long distance for me and today's gonna be another hot day you know I'm not even bothering to do some fishing along this stretch of the river because I know there's there's no fish on this part of the river it's a freaking shallow and muddy kind of dirty water here now I don't want to waste my time fishing here so when the water level gets better I'm just gonna do beast patterning um, I have to make a, a distance at least over 40 kilometers today more time tomorrow um, for the rapids and fishing uh, which way should I go okay. <laughs> goes <laughs> I don't have to hop out again oh. All right, so another shadow rapid. Well, it seems like this stretch of the river from my booking point, Sandyland Provincial Forest, to, to the town of Dashvara, this is like 20, 25 um, kilometers. Um, so, this stretch of the river, all the rapids, class one, class two. Um, you know, the water level is just super, super low. Like, uh, you know, I have, to, uh, I have to keep hopping out the canoe and line the canoe through the rapid and, you know, hop back to the canoe. It's just, uh, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, it's 1, it's almost 1.40 p.m. I've been paddling about almost the four hours. Uh, you know, I haven't been making a... Uh, any distance so far. You know, I don't mind Lying in the canoe, I think it's pretty concerning because you know there's no way I can make any distance today. I was supposed to make like 40 kilometers, but I don't think that's possible. Thank <laughs> you. 
So first the highway of this trip, Transcanda Highway. So that means I have entered the town of Kadashvara as the first town of this river. So after this town, I mean after this highway, uh, the water level should be better. It should be uh, you know higher than before. And I'm gonna do a beast patterning to make a significant amount of distance. I need a paddle at least, like I said, 40 um, to make to the campsite. There's a, there's, a, there's a sandy beach campsite, um, you know, right after the intersection of Birch River and White Mouth River. So hopefully uh, I can make to it. Well, sometimes I like patterning urban rivers. Doesn't have to be a you know wide river in the wilderness. In a river like this, it's pretty fun. It's got a wilderness area. It's got a human development. There are farmland, wetland, bridges, highways, roads. Households, everything. So you, you get to see a lot of things, you know. The mama bear with cubs. That's so cool. That is so cool. That is so cool. Well, I can zoom in a little bit. My camera is like just there. Well, they wanted to cross the cross the river. Well, I think I'm the one who interrupted them. That's a mama bear. That is so cool. This is really my backup paddle. I don't, I don't like use double blade paddle, but just in case, if you want to make make a distance, you do need them. You know, they work more efficient than single blade paddles. You know what I learned from this adventure so far? <laughs> You want to make your canoe go fast? You line it. You don't paddle. You line the canoe. You know. See, line is faster than paddling, right? So I did learn something from this adventure, right? I learned something. Oh, now it's getting deep. It's getting deep. All right. You know, this trip has 120 kilometers, which is about 75 miles. You know, I might have to line the canoe for 60 kilometers for half of the trip because of the water level, you know. But I still believe it was a wonderful experience. Wonderful experience, wonderful, absolutely wonderful experience. So think of, uh, you know, think of lining canoe as scratching, you know, taking a break. <laughs> yeah, I've taken a lot of breaks and I'm still tired, still tired. I don't feel like eating, I'm not hungry. You know, just had, just 
had a couple of uh, chocolate bars. I'm still pretty uh, energetic right now. Check out the bottom of this river. This is like a sandy bottom. With a low water like this. This stuck river looks like a sandy beach. Huge. I mean, see? It's a huge area of sandy beach. So I'm gonna call it a day. Um, yeah, it's almost a nine o'clock. Oh my god, I paddled almost eleven hours. It's a tough day. Tough day. Challenging, rewarding. I'm just gonna set up camp here. Pretty, uh, Spacious, you know, sandy beach. Talk. Whew. What do you think? I'm tired. You know, exhausted. I don't want to paddle anymore. All right, let's do it. So what do you guys use to bail your canoe? This is what I learned from this trip. Use your shoes. See? It's pretty effective. crazy about about like crazy light solo tent um, for canoe trips lightweight tent it's good I'm a big fan of lightweight tent 
have several different brands MSR, Eureka, you know, Nature Hike, and the North Face, etc. etc. So tired. You know, after after pattering for like ten hours, eleven hours, really don't wanna do anything, just tucking the tent and getting to sleep right away. <clears throat> I just had some uh, snacks and bread. Um, didn't cook anything. Um, you know, sleepy and exhausted. <laughs> well, only because the water lab was low. Um, otherwise, it would have been a very fun day, you know. Uh, just run some class one, class two rapids. That's what, I'm camp what I came here for. Um, so, tomorrow... I mean, with water level like this, uh, I should start tomorrow, early tomorrow, and uh, probably gonna lie in canoe uh, for another 20 kilometers and paddle another 40 kilometers. So tomorrow should be a long day, another long day, and uh, yeah, hopefully I can run some rapids tomorrow. I'm not sure, but uh, um, you know it's supposed to be a very exciting and fun day tomorrow because I have like at least the four class three rapids uh, tomorrow. But uh, I'm not sure because the water level is so low and maybe the rapids are just dry and and there's no way I can paddle through them. But anyway, yeah, we'll see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty uh, unique experience. Never paddle river like this. Never line a river like this. Line a canoe like this. So, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool experience. Anyway, I see you guys tomorrow. Sleepy. See. That's beaver. Lots of beavers around me. Making noise. Building dams. Anyway. Okay, I'll see you guys. See you guys tomorrow morning. Good night. Water is warm. You know, it's kind of cheap this morning, but water is warm. It's nice. No open fires, guys. No open fires. That sounds in Manitoba. Fire banner right now is in the fact. So, you know, I have to use a few canister. Sometimes this guy is more efficient. You know, it cooks faster. With a little stove like this, it cooks faster. And it's cleaner than campfire. Alright, so this is my breakfast and snack bag. You know, we got a cup of chocolate bars, 
you know, uh, bread and mini cakes, some peanuts, some peanuts. And oatmeal. Oatmeals for breakfast. Mmm. Sweet. Bye campsite. Thank you for everything. might have had to use this double plate paddle the whole day because the water level is so low I can't even perform you know J-stroke with single plate paddle so <laughs> well, that's okay you know I needed to make a distance anyway so this one this one's good What do you got? picking up.
kilometers away. Woo! Oh, yeah, it's dry. It is dry. But anyway, I'm going to have to scout it. Freaking dry. Ah, this is gonna be a long line. I mean. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Like I said, I have no retreat. No back down. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go. did it! Oh. oh my gosh! That was, that was probably the most sketchy lining ever. Shot. Just 
just a follow it's a pretty straightforward. We just follow the suit here. And then run this. You know, it's very straightforward. Um, I'm just gonna get my stuff out of the boat, uh, put them on the shore, and I'm gonna give it a shot. This is not, uh, this is not sketchy, and not, not difficult at all. I run a rapid. That was exciting. Well, I mean, the water level was pretty low. Uh, there was no risky at all because the low water level. So uh, even if I get dumped, it's not really a big deal. It's great. First running of this trip. So uh, today's mission is completed. Um, right now it's 7:40. Uh, I'm still gonna keep paddling for another one, one hour and a half. You know, trying to find a perfect spot uh, for camping. And I'm not even bothering to do any fishing here because the water is just <laughs> crazy. And what I have done today, you know. Um, it's basically just uh, lying in the canoe, paddling a random one rapid. Um, yeah, pretty cool. But uh, lying in the canoe is really just a pain in the butt. But I'm kind of starting to get used to it. I think uh, tomorrow. Um, there's still like a couple of uh, class 3 rabbits between Elma and White Mountain. Probably the water level is low as well. Not navigable. And we might have to still line up here again.
beautiful sunset. And there are falls right there. It's a pretty cool campsite. The deep fried rice. Wow, it smells so good. This is my favorite um, canoe trip meal. You know, it's it's very convenient, easy to cook. You just have to um, you just have to boil it with water and then eat it. It's very simple. Sometimes I don't, I don't, I don't want to make a fancy dinner, you know, during a canoe trip, especially a challenging adventure, and you're exhausted. You don't want to make anything. Mm. Mm. The beef tastes really good. Cheers, guys. Mm. Okay, day three. There's a big fish. Those big fish swimming on the water. I can see him. Your 
nice place. Well, this area is pretty close to White Shell Provincial Park, so um, the Canadian Shield uh, just starts to appear. You know, these are Canadian Shield. I like Shield. It looks pretty uh, beautiful. In front of me is the last rap rap falls. falls. It's one of the significantly difficult rapids along the road. And now Yeah, it's dry. It is dry. So, well, I think there's no difference between this one and previous ones, you know, just the dry rapids slash falls, uh, low water volume, there's no difference. See, this is a super long rapid, super, super bony, rocks and boulders everywhere. This is going to be a long lining. God, I can't believe, I can't believe a line of canoe right from there all the way through this extremely bony rapid, dry. Um, I think I just took like one year out of my canoe's life. But that's fine, that's fine. That's, that's experience, right? Alright, so I think I just um, I just completed the longest road of my entire life, um, Cook's Falls. That is that is a canoe, canoe breaker. <laughs> it's super tough, like super long, bony. Yeah, it's, it's it's not one of the most difficult rapids along the river. It is the most difficult rapids along the river. Well, I think the rapids have 
has at least the two kilometers from right there over there to here it's got two sets like two big sets of long rapids i mean even if the water level is high it's it's not recommended to run this one this one is like super technical um unless you have you have many years of you know paddling white water um for me i think i'm lucky because if the water level is high i don't know what to do i don't want to break my canoe you know it took me over one hour to get my canoe over over this freaking bony area and there's no way I can put hard to canoe over one one and a half one and a half one hour and a half you know it was four o'clock that I started um, you know line the canoe from the Cuckoo Rapids and then right now it's 520 okay so that's it that's pretty much the highlights of this trip and I'm just gonna do um, like beast paddling to the destination um, hopefully to get into the destination by by 8 yeah fingers crossed not sure I'm not sure it's tough it's tough guys Almost there. Almost there. It's 10 p.m. right now. God is slow. Just my wife and daughter are waiting for me at the parking lot right now. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have another like 50 minutes. Going to GPS.